Hello, everybody. I've spent nearly a decade developing for VR using Unity and Meta hardware. From the DK2 days up through the Quest 3S, doing everything from user interface design to game mechanics to immersive audio. Here at Meta, I'm specializing in MR interactions on the Interaction SDK team. And today, I'd like to talk about some new input features in Interaction SDK and Movement SDK. All right, Interaction SDK. So what is Interaction SDK? ISDK, for short, is a production library that makes it easy to add controller and hand interactions to your Unity MR experiences. Interaction models such as raycast or poke on a surface, grab with hand posing, pose and gesture detection, or locomotion. This year, there are a number of new exciting features coming to Interaction SDK. One standout feature is support for Unity's XR. So historically, ISDK has had a hard dependency on the core SDK, which means OVR plugin and OVR camera rig. This made it difficult to make cross-platform experiences using ISDK. But starting with version 67, the ISDK Essentials package supports Unity's XR Origin and the XR Hands package. Projects built for any platform that Unity XR supports can include ISDK interactions without requiring the core SDK. The Essentials package also includes a comprehensive sample scene, which showcases our core interaction models built on top of the XR Origin rig. Another new feature this year is Quick Actions. Now, Quick Actions is a feature that enables you to easily add interactions to your Unity scenes. So how many people here are familiar with Interaction SDK? Has anybody used it? Okay. How, how many have used it and not familiar? Like, okay. So if you've used it in the past, you may have seen that it could be kind of hard to get started with. When you're like, I just want to grab this thing. How do I do it? There's a ton of components. You have to figure out how to wire them together and go through documentation. It can be a pain. So that was something that was near and dear to our heart. And so Quick Actions is here to address this. No more do you have to learn how to wire all the components together to do simple interactions. But instead, there's a right-click contextual menu that you can use to just right-click a game object in your scene and say, make it grabbable, make it raycastable, or a canvas pokeable, et cetera. So many interactions that you can see on there, such as ray grab and even teleport interactions on there. So with a few simple clicks, you can add interactions to your Unity scenes. We have found that with quick actions, set up that you could take hours for a new developer once they install ISDK can be reduced to minutes. So every Quest application, whether it's focused on gaming, fitness, or productivity, requires a well-designed user interface. As the first point of contact for new users, the UI plays a crucial role in shaping their experience. To help you create high-quality UI, we're excited to announce the launch of UI sets for ISDK next month for Unity and Figma. So UI sets, what does this mean to me? So you know the Meta Horizon OS, the home screen, you boot up the Quest, you get in there and you see the UI. This is what we're giving you. So with this capability, all the familiarity that dev developers have and users have of Quest hardware when they go into the OS and they navigate is now available for you to put in your app. In addition to this familiarity, the advantage is, of course, the years of iteration and tuning we've done on it, whether that's touch target sizing or animations, all of this is included in UI sets for you to drag and drop in. But wait, there's more. There's theming capabilities. So as you can see, you can change the color of it if you don't want the Horizon OS gray. You could change it to match your app's unique branding. And also, controller and hand interactions are built into these components. So micro gestures. Micro gestures is a super cool new feature that expands the hand interaction space by recognizing finger-based gestures and thumb taps and swipes on your index finger. So things like this, a tap here, a swipe here, and a swipe here. These are previously not very reliable because the motions are very small. But micro gestures makes these very reliable and very easy to use. So with this, you can emulate a remote control, doing things like 2D menu navigation, shortcuts, uh, match three game, or even locomotion. And speaking of locomotion, later this year, ISDK is launching big updates to locomotion, including micro gesture support. So this video shows a user tapping their thumb to teleport around and swipe left for snap turn left and swipe right for slap, snap turn right. This is a super low friction interaction where you could do this for an extended period of time and navigate around your scene and it, your finger doesn't get tired and it, it just works. So not only are we including micro gesture support, we're including a better controller locomotion, including teleport and smooth locomotion. 
We also ship best practice user settings that you can use within your apps. People have been asking for it for a long time, but ISDK for Unreal has arrived. So <laughs> how many Unreal developers are here? All right, yeah, they're there, and they're, and they're, and they're excited. So <laughs> ISDK for Unreal has arrived. So the ISDK Unreal in integration uh, is launching in V69, version 69, with support for Unreal Engine 5.4 or greater. This is going to be available on the Unreal Marketplace and the Meta Horizon Developer Center. It works with the Meta XR Unreal plugin to give you interactions such as raycast, poke on a surface, grab and throw interactions, and one and two handed object transformations. We are continually planning improvements and working on this throughout the year, including better controller support, hand posing for your grab interactions, and the distance grab interaction. So, lots of new stuff coming to Interaction SDK. But now I want to talk about Movement SDK. So, what is Movement SDK? Well, MSDK for short translates the physical you into the virtual you by providing eye tracking, face tracking, and body tracking bindings for both Unity and Unreal. The technologies in Movement SDK can empower games, avatars, or fitness activities. I want to highlight three features this year. Inside out body tracking, or IOBT, generative legs, and audio to expressions. So inside out body tracking, or IOBT, because it's very long to say, uses cameras to track your upper body. This is in contrast to previous technologies, which only would track either your hands or your controllers, basically your wrist position and your head position, and then synthesize a body with IK and figure out where your elbows and shoulders are. And this worked great, but as far as immersion is concerned, nothing beats having your actual joints tracked. This way, your arms are doing what they are doing in real life, and you don't get that immersion break from seeing my hands are not really my hands in the metaverse here. So one title I'd like to highlight that uses IOBT is Body of Mind, which is an award-winning experience that allows you to inhabit the body of another gender. Generative legs. We have legs, no more floating torsos. So generative legs uses the upper body motion to generate natural movement for legs. Here you can see Resolution Games using it in their game Racket Club, which allows you to play racket sports against an opponent. And you can see the legs here doing very natural movements. I'm not going to mimic them because that means laying down on the ground, but you can see squatting and laying down and, and doing all that stuff. The legs are doing natural things. So again, greatly increases their immersion and gives you a sense of presence with the person you're playing with. All right, we've talked about the upper body, we've talked about the lower body, but what about the face? We all know that proper facial expression is paramount to communication, both in the real world and, of course, in the metaverse. And avatars, historically, could look a bit robotic when they're talking to you. They could have kind of a wooden face where only the mouth moves, and they look like something out of iRobot or something like that. So traditionally, these avatars use blend shapes to just only activate the mouth, based on visemes which mimic the O or A sounds. But now... What? Oh, no. With Audio 2 Expressions, we provide full facial animation, including cheekbones, eyes, and eyebrows. On the left, you can see Audio 2 Expressions, and on the right, you can see Lip Sync, or the old technology. So which one would you want representing you in the metaverse? For apps that require text input, Meta's Core SDK provides several options. For short form text input and experience in app, we have the system keyboard overlay, which is recommended for things like login forms, room codes, or search. This offers multiple languages, dictation, predictive text, and swipe, and does direct touch with both hands and controllers with free positioning for maximum comfort. This is great for in your app, in your immersive app. However, again, better for short form things. Nothing beats a physical keyboard for long form. So for apps with long-form input needs, we've updated our tracked keyboard. So instead of only um, being restricted to a few different keyboard types, and remember, tracked keyboard, it applies a cutout to your virtual environment so you can see a physical keyboard and then sends those keystrokes to the app. Instead of only working with a few different keyboards and being able to track those, now we can work for virtually any standard keyboard or laptop with pass-through. So you can plop a keyboard down, and you can type with it, and your app now gets the keystrokes. And one last hand tracking feature I'm excited to share is low light support. You can now use your hands to control your Quest 3S in any lighting conditions, whether it's the red eye flights or lying in bed watching a movie. Quest 3S will reliably track your hands, ensuring a delightful experience. As you can see, here they're using Interaction SDK in uh, mixed reality, and it's a very dark room. 
this could be my office. Because I personally like the mood lighting, and it's hard when you have hand tracking, having to constantly turn on actual lights, not great. So this is excellent. So from object interactions to movement tracking, from facial recognition to text input, Meta SDKs provide robust and intuitive solutions to enable developers to incorporate human input into their applications. But of equal importance to input is feedback back from the application to the user. And with that, I'd like to welcome my colleague Ryan to speak about the audio and haptics SDKs. Thanks, man. Great job. Thanks so much, David. That was awesome. Um, hi. What does it mean for something to sound great? Is it realism? Is it accuracy? Is it fidelity, evocativeness? Does immersive sound also mean being able to feel it? My motto is building the future, connecting people through sound. And I get to put this motto into practice every day at Camouflage, working with Meta's spatial audio and haptics tools. Creating immersive and realistic sounding spatial audio in virtual reality, in virtual reality can be difficult. The way sound behaves in VR can make or break an immersive experience. And simulating virtual spaces is difficult and computationally expensive. The limitations imposed by mobile VR make high quality audio even more difficult to achieve. Meta's audio SDK is a great foundation for 3D audio, but you have to also consider the spaces that those 3D sounds live within. This is a great quote. Listening tunes our brains to the patterns of our environment faster than any other sense. Enter the concept of virtual room acoustics, which is using special reverbs to emulate the behavior of a sound in a real space. When virtual acoustics are missing or poorly implemented, spaces can feel fake or artificial. Often, this is because the sound of what we're hearing is not quite syncing up with what we're seeing. Just like how low quality lighting and shadows can make a, a scene, or high quality lighting and shadows can make a scene feel more real, accurate acoustic design of spaces can do the same thing for sound. That's why we need to get acoustic simulations right for VR. It's not just about hearing sounds. It's about feeling like you're really there. The traditional approach to selecting reverbs in virtual reality experiences can be time consuming and artificial sounding. This slide illustrates how sound without virtual acoustics travels unrealistically directly to the listener, highlighting the need for a more effective and realistic sounding solution. There are tools for PC and console development that allow you to do this kind of work, but they're not suitable for mobile VR platforms like Quest. Therefore, we need a dedicated solution. And thankfully, Meta has provided a solution that addresses this. Enter acoustic ray tracing. Meta's acoustic ray tracing provides an excellent solution for creating realistic sonic environments. It delivers high fidelity virtual room acoustics that run beautifully on Quest. It is surprisingly easy to integrate, even with complex sounding spaces with tons of voices. Plus, it handles advanced sound processing like acoustic materials, occlusion, and diffraction, which is sound bending around walls. Check out this video demo to hear the difference uh, with acoustic ray tracing off and then on. I do want to preface this by saying, for the audio people in here, this is a mono room. So all the spatial audio is going to break when you hear it. So the best way to check this out is to play Batman Arkham Shadow, which is coming out soon. But we'll talk about that more later. Vegas whisper of reverb. <laughs> the implementation of acoustic ray tracing in VR gameplay has significant impacts for immersion. By accurately monitoring, monitor, modeling sonic behavior, players will feel more connected to virtual spaces. They can use their ears to navigate and interact with the virtual world in a more natural and intuitive way. This increased realism will ground gameplay creating a sense of presence in VR. 
Meta developed acoustic ray tracing, which we shortened to ART, to give developers like you even more control over acoustics. It is specifically designed to handle AAA game environments that are quite complex, so you can create immersive experiences that sound natural. Art integrates seamlessly with the tools you're already using, so you can get started right away. MetaXR Audio and RL Research Audio collaborated with our studio, Camouflage, to debut acoustic ray tracing in Batman Arkham Shadow. So now that we've introduced acoustic ray tracing, let's talk more about how you actually use it as a developer. It works seamlessly with the existing spatial audio tools provided by Meta XR Audio SDK, so you can create immersive audio for experiences without too much trouble. Plus, it supports major game engines like Unity, Unreal, and audio middleware solutions like Wise and FMOD. The workflow is super simple. Just tag level geometry, assign acoustic materials, and bake an acoustic map. Are you ready to give it a try? You can download it via the QR codes on the screen up here, and you can grab the SDK and start experimenting. And if you need help, documentation and support are a click away. I'm now stoked to show you how Batman is being uh, impacted positively by acoustic ray tracing. It's made a huge difference in our game's audio quality. It, and it also remains really easy to manage. Uh, for example, we have over 200 scenes that are gonna have acoustic ray tracing in them. And we manage them in large groups rather than individually. And that makes things a lot easier for us to manage. Um, the other benefit to working with scene groups and with the way that acoustic ray tracing is uh, working in Unity and with WISE, uh, it's really resistant or resilient when scenes change. I, all I have to do when a, a level designer comes in and changes the geometry of a scene is just bake the acoustic map again and my acoustics match up perfectly. So whether in a small wooden office or on the concrete and glass city streets of Gotham, art ensures that our sound reacts appropriately. With art, you've got a ton of ways to fine tune the, the, everything about the system to get the perfect sound you're looking for. The WISE implementation gives you granular control over occlusion, reverb sends, volumetric radius, head-related transfer function, and a lot of other things on a per-object basis. This means you can make sure that sounds are accurately represented in the game world. For example, if a conversation is happening on the other side of a brick wall, the sound will be appropriately occluded or muffled automatically, just like it would be in real life. If you need more flexibility, there's a acoustic control zones, which lets you set areas of rooms within rooms that have different behaviors. So for example, if I need a smaller area in a large room to have a little bit less RT60 or reverb activity, I can just go ahead and add an acoustic control zone and make that change even at runtime. Super useful. So acoustic ray tracing enhances the sense of presence and immersion in VR, allowing players to feel like they're really part of the world that they're embodying. It accurately simulates the small rooms and large interior spaces and gives players spatial context. It particularly excels at ambiences and environmental effects. And it, in our game, it has improved combat, navigation, ambiences, locomotion, and lots of other aspects of the gameplay in Arkham Shadow. By leveraging art, players can use their auditory senses to detect threats and navigate the game world more effectively, adding a new layer of depth to the gameplay. If you're making uh, immersive VR experiences, acoustic ray tracing can ensure quick, realistic, and performant room acoustics that benefit players and developers alike. Ultimately, the best way for you to experience what acoustic ray tracing has to offer is to play Batman Arkham Shadow when it comes out very, very soon. We can't wait for you to hear what Gotham City sounds like with beautiful, world-class virtual room acoustics and 3D audio. So spatial audio is something I'm happy to think about every day, but I am equally passionate about haptics. I've been working with this technology for nearly 10 years, and I'm super excited to talk about the level of feeling provided to Batman Arkham Shadow using Meta's haptic SDK and controllers. This haptic technology empowers developers to create experiences that players will find unforgettable. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about the evolution of haptics on Quest. Haptic motors have undergone significant advancements evolving from simple vibration mechanisms to sophisticated feedback systems. 
the MetaQuest Pro and MetaQuest 3 and S utilize modern voice coil motors. We shorten that to VCM, which enable new creative possibilities in haptic feedback. The transition to VCMs represents a shift from basic buzzes to detailed, nuanced feedback, allowing users to experience a wide range of new sensations that were not possible before. With VCMs, users can feel subtle interactions like rain on an umbrella or detailed feedback from a mechanical interface. Sophisticated haptic feedback like this has the potential to enhance user experience, providing more immersive and engaging virtual interactions. However, to create these new exciting opportunities in feedback design, we need new tools. So the traditional tool chains have been fragmented, lacking a unified solution for design and haptic implementation. Budget allocation for haptics is usually minimal compared to visual and audio, further complicating the development process. Haptic quality adjustments had to be made manually for, to support different devices, limiting data reuse and increasing development time. Historically, haptics design required complex coding skills, which slowed down creative input and limited the potential for innovative haptic experiences. As a result, haptics development has been complex, costly, and often resulted in subpar quality, hindering the adoption of this important sensory feedback mechanism. Thankfully, Meta has introduced an end-to-end -end development solution for haptics, which is detailed in the video here. Okay. Haptic design workflow described here is simple. You import existing audio effects to design haptics, and Haptic Studio will get you most of the way there automatically. Then you can test and validate your designs in the VR companion app with no compilation. The reality of this is something I do every day. I open up Haptic Studio, I put on my headset, and I can adjust the feeling while I'm holding the controller, and the feedback loop is immediate. It's awesome. Uh, you then export those haptic clips as hardware agnostic haptic files. Then you can import those haptic files into Unity or Unreal using the Haptics SDK. The Haptics SDK detects controllers automatically and then renders the appropriate haptic for that controller. As you can see, these tools and workflows enhance speed, enable asset reuse, and ensure compatibility across the Quest ecosystem. Since December 2023, studios have been leveraging these new tools to create exceptional haptic experiences. Beat Games has updated their popular title, Beat Saber, with enhanced haptics incorporating energy beams and energy discharge. Sanzaru has integrated over 700 high-quality haptic effects into Asgard's Wrath 2. Examples include physicality in weapon interactions and realistic feeling strings for Cyrene's harp. Toast Interactive has utilized these new tools to enhance Max Mustard with magical interactions, increasing fun and character engagement. Overall, these advancements in haptic technology are allowing developers to create immersive and engaging experiences for players, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in VR. I'm now happy to share how we're utilizing these tools that are enabled by Meta Haptic Studio and the Haptic SDK to greatly enhance the experience of Batman Arkham Shadow. One of the key pillars of Batman Arkham Shadow is to extend the audio into the controllers. We believe that haptics should be closely tied to what the player is hearing, particularly in situations where the player would feel something in real life, such as when using gadgets or when engaging in combat. 
Haptic Studio and Haptic SDK enable us to create this level of multi-sensory connection, allowing players to experience a more immersive and engaging game world. We have created over 1,000 custom haptic effects across every area of the game, ensuring that the player's senses are totally engaged. Our use of stereo haptics allows us to convey realistic movement and width by creating different feeling in each hand, allowing for special effects and natural feeling interactions. The haptic dictionary system was invented to support modern, complex audio systems. Modern games often use many thousands or much more audio files, and the haptic dictionary system is designed to support them with minimal effort. For example, Batman's stealth takedown grab fires one of five different audio files uh, at random when executed. The haptic dictionary system latches onto that and we create five individual haptic files which are then called in sync with the audio that's being called via WISE. That means we can have extremely complex audio systems that are supported by extremely complex haptic systems and the player will feel it as one experience. Our system also supports spatial haptics which provides a world position for haptics in 3D. This means that an explosion that's at a distance will feel weaker than an explosion that's at your feet. As we've discussed, these new tools, um, yeah, I'm good here, yes. These new tools have addressed many core issues in haptic development. V6.9 introduces cross-platform support, enhancing asset utilization across various platforms. Haptics SDK now supports PC VR builds for Unity and Unreal. I heard a yes, it's very good. You can use the same haptic assets from Quest on Steam apps directly. Meta Haptic Studio also allows the export of assets as WAV files. This means seamless integration of these WAV files into other platforms SDKs for broader platform compatibility. These new features have been co-developed with Toast VR and Big Box VR. Both Max Mustard and Population One will ship haptics built with Meta Haptic Studio across multiple platforms in their next release. I'm very grateful to be able to share all the cool stuff we're working on with you. 